Well, good morning, everyone. Let us pray. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 73. In the Lord God have I made my refuge. Truly, God is loving to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious of the proud. I saw the wicked in such prosperity. For they suffer no pains, and their bodies are sleek and sound. They come to know misfortune like other folk, nor are they plagued as others are. Therefore pride is their necklace, and violence wraps them like a cloak. Their iniquity comes from within, the conceits of their hearts overflow. They scoff and speak only of evil. They talk of oppression from on high. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue ranges round the earth. And so the people turn to them and find in them no fault. They say, how should God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked. Ever at ease, they increase their wealth. Is it in vain that I cleansed my heart and washed my hands in innocence? All day long have I been stricken and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak as they do. I should have betrayed the generation of your children. Then thought I to understand this, but it was too hard for me. Until I entered the sanctuary of God and understood the, wicked, the end of the wicked, how you set them in slippery places, you cast them down to destruction. How suddenly do they come to destruction, perish and come to a fearful end. As with a dream when one awakes, so, Lord, when you arise, will you will despise their image. When my heart became embittered and I was pierced to the quick, I was but foolish and ignorant in your presence. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing upon earth that I desire in comparison with you. Though my flesh and my heart fail me, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly, those who forsake you will perish. You will put to silence the faithless who betray you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. In the Lord God have I made my refuge that I may tell of all your works. In the Lord God have I made my refuge. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Holy God, may we find wisdom in your presence, and set our hope not on uncertain riches, but on the love that holds us to the end. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Judges chapter 9. Abimelech, son of Jeroboam, went to Shechem to his uncles and all his mother's relatives and said to them, Ask all the leading men of Shechem, what do you think is best? That 70 men rule, rule you, all those sons of Jeroboam? Or that one man rule. You'll remember that I am your own flesh and blood. His mother's relatives reported the proposal to the leaders of Shechem, and they were inclined to take Abimelech, because they said, He is, after all, one of us. They gave him seventy pieces of silver 
on the shrine of Baal of the Covenant. With the money, he hired some reckless riffraff soldiers and they followed along after him. He went to his father's house at Orpha and killed his half-brothers, the sons of Jeroboam, 70 men, and on one stone. The youngest, Jotham, son of Jeroboam, managed to hide, the only survivor. Then all the leaders of Shechem and Beth Milo gathered at the oak by the standing stone at Shechem and crowned Abimelech king. When this was told to Jotham, he climbed to the top of Mount Gerizim, raised his voice and shouted, Listen to me, leaders of Shechem, and let God listen to you. The trees set out one day to anoint a king for themselves. They said to Olive Tree, rule over us. But Olive Tree told them, am I no longer good for making oil? That gives glory to gods and men, and to be demoted to waving over trees. The trees then said to Fig Tree, you come and rule over us. But Fig Tree said to them, am I no longer good for making sweets, my mouth watering sweet fruits, and to be demoted to waving over trees? The trees then said to Vine, you come. Come and rule over us. Am I no longer good for making wine, wine that cheers gods and men, and to be demoted to waving over trees? All the trees then said to Tumbleweed, You come and reign over us. But Tumbleweed said to the trees, If you're serious about making me your king, come and find shelter in my shade. But if not, let fire shoot from Tumbleweed and burn down the cedars of Lebanon. Now listen. Do you think you did a right and honourable thing when you made Abimelech king? Do you think you treated Jeroboam and his family well, did for him what he deserved? My father fought for you, risked his own life, and rescued from you from Midian's, Midian's tyranny. And you have, just now, betrayed him. You massacred his sons, 70 men on a single stone. You made Abimelech, the son of, your, of his maidservant, king over Shechem's leaders, because he's your relative. If you think that that is an honest day's work, this way you have treated Jeroboam today, then enjoy Abimech and let him enjoy you. But if not, let fire break from Abimech and burn up the leaders of Shechem and Beth Milo. And let fire break from the leaders of Shechem and Beth Milo and burn up Abimech. And Jotham fled. He ran for his life. He went to Beer and settled down there because he was afraid of his brother, Abimelech. Calm me, Lord, as you calm the storm. Calm me, Lord, as you calmed the storm. Still me, Lord, keep me from harm. Let all the tumult within me cease. Enfold me, Lord, in your peace. Lord, enfold me in your peace. Luke 15. Then Jesus said, There was once a man who had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, I want right now what's coming to me. So the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant country. There, undisciplined and dissipated, he wasted everything he had. After he had gone through all his money, there was a bad famine all through that country, and he began to hurt. He signed on with a citizen there to assign him to, who assigned him to his field to slop the pigs. He was so hungry... He would have eaten the corn cobs in the pig slop, but no one would give him any. That brought him to his senses. He said, all those farm hands working for my father sit down to three meals a day, and here I am starving to death. I'm going back to my father. I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son. Take me on as a hired hand. He got right up and went home to his father. When he was still a long way off, his father saw him. His heart pounding, he ran out, embraced him and kissed him. The son started his speech. Father, 
I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. But the father wasn't listening. He was calling to the servants. Quick, bring a clean set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on, the thing on, his, ring on his finger and his sandals on his feet. Then get a grain-fed heifer and roast it. We're going to feast. We're going to have a wonderful time. This son is, my son is here, given up for dead and now alive, given up for lost and now found. And they began to have a wonderful time. All this time, his older brother was out, oh, the, his older son was out in the field. When the day's work was done, he came in. As he approached the house, he heard the music and dancing. Calling over one of the houseboys, he asked what was going on. He told him, your brother came home. Your father has ordered a feast, barbecued beef, because he has him home safe and sound. The older brother stalked off in an angry sulk and refused to join in. His father came out and tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't listen. The son said, look how many years I've stayed here serving you, never giving you a moment of grief. But have you ever thrown a party for me and my friends? Then this son of yours, who has thrown away your money on whores, shows up and you go all out with a feast. His father said, son, you don't understand. You're with me all the time and everything that is mine is yours. But this is a wonderful time and we had to celebrate. This brother of yours was dead and he's alive. He was lost and he's found. This meditation from Martin Percy on the verse, we had to celebrate and rejoice. Martin Luther claimed that if this were the only parable in the New Testament, it would be enough. But like many, many parables, this one is misnamed. It's not about a prodigal son, rather it is the father that is the prodigal because prodigal means generous, lavish, liberal, unstinting, unsparing bountiful and extravagant, even profligate. The father displays a generosity far in excess of the customary standards of his time and place. He need not have divided the property. He need not have been on the lookout for the returning son. He need not have run down the road. He need not have restored the son to his family. He need not have killed the fatted calf in celebration of his son's rebirth. But all this he did. The beauty of this parable lies in the details. The younger son dishonours the father. How does the father respond? By running to his son. Yes, running. Only slaves and children ran. The elders walked. But the father lays aside his honour once again to embrace his beloved. And then celebrates with excessive feasting. The older son is the very opposite of prodigal. He is thrifty, economical, and parsimonious. God is not. God is lavish and wasteful. God loves to excess, even when that love is not even God. God loves to excess, even when that love is not wanted or merited. The God in this parable is not a small God. The prodigal father's love is superabundant, boundless, and inexhaustible, and endlessly generous. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name above every name, 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that we have this opportunity to meet, to pray. And as we reflect on your word, we pray for wisdom in our election of leaders. Uh, Father, we pray that you'd, uh, uh, at, at every level of our political life, to be discerning and uh, conscious of a wider picture than our own selfish interests. Uh, Father, we thank you for uh, the parable of the prodigal father. Lord, we pray that today you'd help us to open ourselves to that generosity more and more, to, to trust in it and to believe in it. And Lord, we pray for the process of gradually returning to gathered worship. We're not quite sure what that looks like yet or when it will happen. And we know that there are all sorts of uh, dynamics which uh, we can't predict our own thoughts and feelings as we uh, contemplate that uh, a new situation. Lord, we pray for for those who might feel in, in a distant country at the moment in terms of their, of their faith and their relationship with you. And we pray that uh, uh, as church reopens in a in a physical uh, pla as a physical place of worship that it would be a place of uh, joyful homecoming and celebration and recognition of your goodness lord in your mercy hear our prayer and father we continue to pray for those who are affected by uh, covid-19 we pray for those who venture into this day uh, with particular apprehensions. And Lord, we pray today for those who feel lost, lonely, and isolated. We can surely think, think of some people <clears throat> that we're conscious of at the moment. Lord, we pray that you would hold them, enable us to be uh, good friends, a good body of Christ around them today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Looking for the coming of his kingdom as our Saviour taught us, so with longing we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord, bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you have a good day and do join me tonight 
for oh chris tonight for evening prayer yeah easily confused i hope you have a good day bye-bye